We care too much what people think. We care way too much what strangers think of us. Forget our families. We, we, we're bothered by what strangers on the internet are going to think of us. But what do you think of you? What's your opinion of yourself? Because that ultimately is the most important opinion, is the one that you have of yourself. Hey everyone, it's Vasavi Kumar, licensed therapist and your host of the Being Human with Vasavi podcast. For over two decades, I have been relentless when it comes to understanding and figuring out why we think the way we do, what stops us from going after our dreams, and how to get anything we want in life. From Mind Body Green to VH1 to Fox News and some of the top rated podcasts out there, my message has always been consistent. When you know yourself, you can do anything. I've helped thousands of people from all walks of life, from stay-at-home moms to entrepreneurs to people in recovery, to start thinking differently and change themselves from the inside out. And I'm going to do the same for you. Whether it's through the interviews I have with my guests or answering your questions right here on the show, here's my promise to you. If you're willing to take action on even 1% of what you hear today, your life will be unrecognizable. Get ready for unfiltered and unscripted conversations with some of the brightest people in mental health, marketing, relationships, and business. We're pulling back the curtain so you can see what it really takes to be human and become the person you want to be here on the Being Human with Vasavi podcast. I am so excited to be here recording the first episode of the podcast. Uh, this is actually like a, you know, Being Human with Vasavi podcast 2.0 because I started this podcast Early 2018 is when I started it. And I started it because I was new in recovery. I was on the path of uh, sobriety from alcohol and cocaine addiction. And I thought we all could use a little inspiration and motivation. I know I can, and I know other people out there can too. I went through some pretty dark times in my mid-30s, and uh, I'm now 38 years old. I'm a little over a year sober. So if you do the math, that means I ended up relapsing and had to go back to rehab back in 2019. So by the grace of God, here I am. I'm excited to be sharing really the message. The core message of this podcast is really that implementation is pointless. What I believe is that when you keep it real with yourself, you can keep it real with other people. And this applies to every area of life. And especially if you're in business, people know that when, 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 I, when I write something or I share a video that I'm, I'm going to be just sharing it, all, sharing it all, right? Because at the end of the day, I want you to know that you're not alone, that whatever you're going through, you're not alone. If you're feeling insecure, you're not alone. If you feel if you feel like you're lacking confidence in doing something, you're not the only one. And so what I hope is by bringing on guests and by sharing my own stories and hearing the stories of other people that you get it truly that you are not alone. And knowing that you're not alone and that there are resources out there for you to really be, do, and have anything you want, it's up to you to take that action 100%. Well, I think spending time together here through the podcast and if you follow me on social media, on my Instagram at Hire Vasavi or on my Facebook at Vasavi Kumar, it's so good for us to spend time together because I believe that when people show their full humanity, like when I show up and I share my shit with you, or when you hear my guests and they show, and they show their shit with you and they show you a behind the scenes look at their life, not just the pretty shiny stuff and the content and the wisdom that they share, but also really what goes on behind closed doors and hear their stories, you'll give yourself permission to be like, you know what? It's not about perfection. It really is about that daily progress. What I love about the 12-step program is the messaging of one day at a time. When I first got sober and I was like, oh my God, I, I, I really want to get to a year at least because a year was a huge milestone for me. Thought of a year seemed so far away and so difficult. But when I said, you know what, I'm taking it one day at a time and I became really present and and lived in the moment, but I still kept that goal in mind. Like I want to hit a year. That was something meaningful to me. It really felt like the days flew by. Some days felt slower than the other, but eventually I got to my year and now I'm a year and almost two months sober. So whatever it is in your life that you're after, whatever goal that you're after, you, it might feel so far away. It might feel so unattainable, but I promise you that if you stay consistent and you stay committed and you stay disciplined, you will get whatever you want, but don't give up on yourself. Most people stop short because they don't see the results right away. You're not meant to see the results right away. You're meant to do the work, the hard work, the stuff that people don't want to do. But I know that you're different because if you're taking the time to listen to this podcast, whether you're on a walk or you're driving or you're cooking at home and you're just kind of playing this podcast in the background, you're trying to learn. You're trying to grow. And that is the first step is that you're open and you're willing to learning and growing and bettering yourself. So this is some of the some of the lies that I think we tell ourselves as to why we can't show up the way we want to show up. We talk a lot about be yourself, show up, be confident, and it's hard. It's hard to do that. It's hard to do that 
because number one, we care too much what people think. We care way too much what strangers think of us. Forget our families. We, we, we're bothered by what strangers on the internet are going to think of us or someone, someone down the street is going to think of us. But what do you think of you? What's your opinion of yourself? Because that ultimately is the most important opinion, right? Is the one that you have of yourself. When you hold yourself to a higher standard and you start taking those right actions that are aligned with your values, you're like, okay, I'm living my so we can cover up who we really are and we strategize and we manipulate how we show up in different scenarios and that causes a conflict within us we say okay well around my family I'm going to be this way and and around my partner I'm going to be this way and around my colleagues I'm going to be this way and on social media I got to show up this way and then we lose sight of who we are because if you're this person if you're one way to this person and one way to this person like who are you and so if you find yourself wearing many masks first of all stop wearing the many masks but if you don't know where really where to begin I highly recommend spending a lot of time with yourself and really getting to know who you are, sitting with yourself, being with yourself, spending time with yourself, understanding the way you think, understanding the way you speak, figuring out why you think the way you do, looking at certain behaviors in your life that you don't like, things that you want to change. But it starts with number one, being honest with yourself, being rigorously honest with yourself. Because I don't know about you, it may be easy to bullshit other people, but at the end of the day, when it's just you and you, if you have the ability to lie to yourself, it's going to be that much harder for you to really develop that relationship with yourself. You got to be rigorously honest with yourself. So here's what I want you to do. When I'm talking about being honest with yourself, I want you to take a hard look at your life, every single area of your life and ask yourself, am I happy? Now, I want to just share a distinction here. I talk to many people who are like, oh, I'm happy, you know, just the way I am. I'm content. And while that's great, you got to be honest with yourself. Are you saying that you're content as a, as a, an excuse for you not to have to make those changes? Because I've talked to many people in my life who are like, I'm happy just the way I am. Cool. So then you don't need to make any changes changes, right? Do you see what that ultimately does? If you say I'm content with what I, with who I am and what I have, then all those ideas and dreams that you've maybe had don't really seem as important because you've already told yourself I'm happy with what I am. While I think it's important to be happy with what you have, being grateful for what you have, there's also nothing wrong with wanting more for your life. There's nothing wrong with saying I want to upgrade. I want to upgrade the way I live. I want to upgrade the way I think. I want to upgrade the way I speak. I want to upgrade how I show up in life. What's wrong with that? Since when did it become wrong wanting to upgrade? upgrade your life. I'm not telling you to be constantly dissatisfied, but I got to be honest with you. I've always been slightly dissatisfied, which I think is what has always pushed me further into wanting to better myself. I'll give you a perfect example. It's currently May 20th. I turned 38 on May 18th. And upon reflection, by the way, I had the best birthday. Best birthday I probably had in about 15 years. Okay. And it was very relaxing. I was sober, very relaxing, went out to dinner. It was great. And um, I looked in the mirror and I said, man, I'm not really feeling my reflection right now. I think I'm a pretty girl and all that's great. Love my face and all that. But I noticed I had gained weight and I'm all for body positivity. But what I'm not for is being unhealthy. And I felt like I think I gained some weight. And upon reflection, I realized, shit, 10 years ago, I was 30 pounds lighter. And I was like, I don't want to feel this way anymore. It's not that I don't love myself. My self-worth and self-value doesn't change because of the weight I've gained. But I know for me personally, I do not feel good. I didn't feel good in my body. I felt like I was carrying this excess weight that I just didn't want. So what did I do? First of all, I got honest with myself. I'm like, I don't like this right now. I want to feel stronger. I want to feel fitter in my body. Second thing I asked I did was take responsibility. So that's the second thing, right? After you get honest with yourself, you got to take responsibility. So I said, all right, Voss, what are the choices that you've been making that have led you to this point of dissatisfaction? Well, sometimes I eat late. I eat things that I know are not the healthiest for me. I overindulge a little bit too much. I'm not as disciplined as I used to be back when I was 28. And so rather than beat myself up and say, you're ugly and you're fat and all this stuff, I said, you know what? Being honest with myself, I want to get fitter. Number two, I got to take responsibility because... Your life as it is right now, whether you're happy with it or not, is a culmination of all the choices that you've made. And I realized that for myself. And so the third thing that I did, which I'm going to always, always say on this podcast, is to ask for help. There is nothing wrong or nothing to be embarrassed of to ask for help. First thing I did, I asked for help. I called up one of my girlfriends, Shada, here in Austin. I said, hey, do you know any personal trainers? Because I know one thing, people come to me for me to help them in their businesses with their mindset. I hold them accountable and we all need that in our life in some area, right? When it comes to my business, I don't have that accountability. No one needs to tell me to do things in my business. No one needs to nudge me to record my podcast. I'm doing this on my own. But when it comes to my physical health, I need a little help. And I admitted that. 
So I asked her, I was like, hey, do you know any personal trainers? I want some one-on-one training here in Austin, Texas. She gave me a list of people, interviewed a few personal trainers. I start with my trainer in a few days, eight o'clock in the morning, three days a week. I also, you know, I know how to cook. Nutrition is definitely 90% of the battle. I know how to cook, but I also know I got a lot on my plate right now. So I found a meal delivery program here in Austin, Texas that does plant-based because I'm vegetarian, plant-based meals that are healthy and nutritious. They deliver them to your door. I'm probably not going to use them forever, but just starting out on this process, I said, you know, I need a little bit of help. I'm juggling a lot of things in my business right now. I need support. But you guys see how I ask for help. And that's what I really want to say to you is that if you really want to do anything in in your life you got to first be honest with yourself that up until this point you've done a certain you've done certain things or not done certain things that have gotten you to where you are and you got to be honest about how you're feeling right now if you're not happy with where you're at financially if you're not happy with where you're at mentally emotionally physically so you feel spiritually bankrupt, you got to be honest with yourself about that. Denial is not going to solve the problem. Denial is going to perpetuate the problem. So the first thing you got to do is be open and willing. Like, I don't like this. You don't have to even necessarily know what you want, by the way. But I think being honest about what you don't want and what you don't like is definitely way better than saying nothing's wrong over here. I'm fine. I'm fine. None of that. Don't lie to yourself. If you don't like something, it's okay. You can do something about it. Number two, you take responsibility for it. Say, okay, well... I haven't really paid attention to this much, uh, to this area in my life. I haven't been budgeting as well as I want to. I haven't been creating as much in my business. I haven't really been following through with certain clients in my business, or I haven't been giving customer service, or I, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't. Whatever it is, take responsibility for why you're at where you're at in your life. This is the part that people don't want to do. We want to blame everything. We want to blame a global pandemic. We want to blame the government. We want to blame our parents. We want to blame our sister, our brother, our partner, the world, the internet. There is absolutely no power in that. You have absolutely, you have zero power when you blame other people. Zero. Because the minute you focus outwards, it's not about you anymore. It's about everybody else. And when it's not about you, then you don't have to do anything about it. And no one out there can solve your problem. You got to take charge of your life. So you've got to take responsibility for your life. This is not about finding fault or blame, but it's really about being like, shit, what did I do to get here? What have I been doing? What have I not been doing? I know for me, when it comes to my my, my weight loss journey and where I'm at, my, my physical health, it's like, I know I haven't been consistent with my workouts. I know I haven't been eating as clean as I could, right? I know I haven't been moving as much. I know I need help and I haven't been asking for it. So take responsibility and ask for help. The third thing is to ask for help. And I think what you're going to find throughout all these podcasts, whether it's me speaking or whether it's my guests, that none of us have gotten to where we are in our life mentally, emotionally, financially, career-wise, spiritually, without the guidance of other people, without asking for support. You do not live on an island. We do not operate in isolation. There are people out there who have gone through what you've gone through, who have been through what you've been through, who have a lot to offer. And if you just say, hey, I need help with this, can you help me out? It's your job to ask for the help, right? Because if you don't talk about it, how does anyone know that you even are struggling? So you've got to ask for that help. So what I wanted to implement on this podcast was the ability to answer your questions directly. So if you go to my website, vasavikumar.com forward slash podcast, you'll see that you can actually record your message right on my website. You can literally leave, I think, a 90 second maximum message. And I will answer those directly on the podcast. I'm going to do a whole, you know, segment of the podcast once a month, probably, where I answer your questions directly. So I'm giving you an opportunity and, a, and access and a resource to be able to get your questions answered. Because I want you to know that you are unstoppable. When you make up your mind, I'm going to do this, whatever this is, when you make up your mind and you develop and you adopt a I'm going to do whatever it takes mentality to figure this out. Nothing, no one can get in your way. Even if you come up against mindset obstacles, even if you come up against fears and anxieties, nothing and no one can stop you. I promise you that. But you got to be honest with yourself. You got to take responsibility and you got to ask for help. So that's how you keep it real with yourself in all areas of your life. Whether you're in a relationship and your communication is struggling and you're like, man, I can't get through to my partner. Be honest with yourself. 
man, I need some, you know, my communication right now with my partner isn't working. I'm not really fully satisfied in this relationship. Take responsibility for your, your, your side of the street. Like, man, you know, I really don't know how to communicate, right? Take responsibility for who you are and how you're showing up and ask for help. Go to a couples counselor, go to a couples therapist, read a book on communication, like figure out a way to solve it, right? Because just sitting in the problem and blaming people for it and blaming your partner or whatever or blaming your childhood is not going to get you to where you want to be. But you got to be honest with yourself, right? Everything starts with being honest with yourself. You got to be rigorously honest with yourself, even if you don't like it, especially when you don't like it. I want you to know that I know it's hard, the thoughts that you may be thinking in your head. You may be like, but Voss, you don't get it. You don't get what my mind is like. It's dark up there. No, I really do, though. Because, see, when I was 20 years old, I was diagnosed with a mental illness. I was told that I had bipolar disorder. I was told that I had to be on medication for the rest of my life. I was told that I had, a, I had an illness, that I was crazy. And I believed that. I chose to believe what the doctors told me. So I went on a cocktail of medication. And when I got divorced in my early 30s, I jumped into a relationship with someone who crushed my spirit because I thought it was my responsibility to take care of other people. I thought it was my job to uh, fix the men in my life. And my dad always says this, you can't lift anybody up, but you sure as shit can be brought down by them. It's a lot harder to lift people up. It's a lot easier to be brought down by the people around you. Negative energy is heavy, but that's what I had allowed into my life. I just want you to even look at that distinction right there, what I had allowed in my life. But here's just a little shift in perspective and languaging. Instead of blaming them and saying they did this to me, how about how am I still allowing this to exist in my life? Not, you're not blaming yourself. You're not judging yourself. You're owning up to it. Wow, I've ignored the red flags. Wow, I ignore my intuition. Man, I've allowed this to exist in my life for years. Why? So I want to say something about finding the root causes. As a therapist, my job is to always help you uncover why you do what you do. I think it's important to really understand the root cause of our trauma. It's important to understand why we think the way we do, why, where we get our beliefs from, why we have certain behavioral patterns, why we communicate the way we do, why we fear what we fear, why we avoid what, what we avoid. It's important because for our emotional mind, we need to make some sense out of it. We, gotta be, we can't just be all emotion, right? We got to incorporate that logical mind and it makes sense and, and have it make sense to us. But at the end of the day, you can know all the reasons why you do what you do and not do anything about it. So when you're listening to this podcast, what I want is for you to really understand, okay, wow, this is why I think the way I think. This is why I do what I do. This is why I speak what I speak. This is why I don't do what I don't do. But then in this moment, you got to be like, okay, well, what am I going to do about it? Because knowing why is like 25%, right? Doing something about it, taking ownership of it in this moment, and, and, and actually being proactive in your life is the rest, 75%. It's important to understand the root cause, absolutely, but don't get stuck analyzing the shit out of your life. As a, as a recovering overanalyzer and overthinker, I'll tell you right now, I had all the reasons in the world why I did what I did. I know why. I know my mommy issues. I know my daddy issues. Oh, my God, I understand why I grew up in this kind of house and that kind of house. And this person said this to me and that person said this to me. Oh, my God. And then I was like, well, why am I still stuck? Right? How can someone be so smart and be so self-aware and still be stuck? Because I was still only focusing on why and not okay, what am I going to do about it? And how am I going to make it happen? So the why, the what, the how, okay? And your beliefs around it. What are the beliefs that you're telling yourself? What are the lies that you're telling yourself? What are the masks that you're still wearing? Get ready to start being rigorously honest with yourself. And let me tell you, it's not easy. I'm not going to sugarcoat shit and tell you that being brutally honest with yourself is like this pleasant experience. It's not because you're going to be confronted with a lot of the the, the truths about yourself that maybe you've been in denial because maybe you've been spending a lot of your time blaming other people. But there is so much liberation when you just take full, full responsibility for your life. You are way more powerful and you are way more in control of your life when you take responsibility for your life, when you own up to the things that have been stopping you. You're like, yeah, you know what? I do give a, uh, you know what? I do give a shit about what other people think. You know what? I don't put myself out there because I'm afraid because I don't want this person not to like me. Or you know what? I have been procrastinating because I have, you know, fear of rejection or I have, fear, you know, fear of disapproval. Own it. Own it. Because when you own it, you're like, damn, I can't believe I've been doing that. 
Okay, cool. What am I going to do about it now? Because this is what you have. All you have is right now in this moment. All you have is right now in this moment. Our life is not guaranteed. Our death is guaranteed. Sorry to be morbid, but it's the truth. We're definitely going to die, but we really don't know how long we're going to live for. So all you have is right now. So if you want to keep it real with yourself, if you're in business and you really want to start being authentic online, start storytelling, start being vulnerable, start putting yourself out there, stop and, and start really living in your creative zone of genius. It starts with you. Everything starts with you. You are the one in your life that can make it happen. And it starts with you knowing yourself. Remember, say it with me. When I know myself, say it with me. When I know myself, I can be, do, and have anything I want say it. I can be, do, and have anything I want. When I know myself, I can be, do, and have anything I want. You got to know yourself. You got to like yourself. You got to trust yourself. Because if you don't know yourself, like yourself, and trust yourself, why should anybody else attempt to know you, like you, and trust you? Give it to yourself first. Everything that you're seeking from everybody else, give it to yourself first. You want attention from other people? Give yourself attention. You want people to start respecting you? Respect yourself. You want people to start validating you? Validate yourself. You want approval from other people? Start approving of yourself. You want people to encourage you? Start encouraging yourself. You have everything you need inside of you right now. And if you need help, ask for help. Because then it's like you got you and your belief in yourself, and then you got someone to encourage you and motivate you right? It's okay if you don't know how to do something to ask for help. It's okay if you know yourself well enough. It's more than okay. You know yourself well enough. No, you know what? I need a little help. I need a little motivation. I need someone to kick my ass, whether, you know, whatever area of your life we're talking about here. Take the time to be with yourself. Stop being distracted all the time. Stop paying attention to what everyone else is posting. Stop consuming what other people are putting out there. When you can't control, create. Start paying attention to those dusty ideas in the back of your head, those hobbies that you know you're good at and you haven't done anything with, that creative side of you that you've completely just not, you know, been ignoring. Don't worry about, well, what if nobody likes it? What if nobody cares about it? No, you got to give yourself that importance. Do what feels good. Life is so short and life is way too short way, way too short to be doing things that don't make you feel good, that don't fill you up and make you feel alive. And it's too short to explain and justify and give reasons or validate why you do or don't want to do certain things. So it's really time to listen to how you feel and ask yourself, does this feel right? Because here's the thing, when you stop doing things that don't make you feel good, you start to create room for things that do matter to you and that are important. What you stop doing is just as important as what you start and continue to do. Leave it all out on the table because what I don't want for you is for you to die with regret. What I don't want for you is to be like, man, I should have just gone with my gut. Man, I can't believe I cared so much what other people thought. I don't want that for you. Thank you so much for listening to episode one. You are not alone. You are never alone. And I can't wait for you to keep tuning in. Like I said, we have great guests coming up. Got them all scheduled. I'm excited to start recording my first interviews with my guests coming up shortly. Let me know what you think. Let me know how I can help you. You can always message me, email me, go to my website at vasavikumar.com. And just remember, when you know yourself, you can be, do, and have anything you want. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode on the Being Human with Vasavi podcast. For even more inspiration, motivation, and no BS advice on how to get anything you want in life, book a call with me over at vasavikumar.com. If you love today's episode, be sure to screenshot it and tag me at Hire Vasavi, H-I-G-H-E-R Vasavi. Feeling extra generous? Leave the podcast a positive review on iTunes. And remember this, when you know yourself, you can be, do, and have anything you want.